So everybody's journey looks a little bit different. And I'm just curious, Tessa, when you started carrying, did you carry every day and why? When I first started carrying, I was going through this whole process of trying to figure out how to carry and what was actually working for me. You know, I'd put a gun on and then I'd go out into the real world and I'd look down and I would see some amount of printing. And I didn't really know what that meant or how to prevent that. And so if it, or it would be uncomfortable too. So when I first started carrying, if I was leaving my gun at home, it was because I was uncomfortable or I didn't feel that I could conceal on what I really wanted to wear for that specific thing. And I went on that way for a couple of months. And then I went to an evening event with friends not carrying. And my, my husband actually wasn't carrying either at the time. And we came home to a shooting that had just happened four doors down from us. And I realized that I had left my home without my gun and I'd come home to a disaster. And if I had come home at a different time, this would have looked a lot different. So from that point on for me, I was very motivated to carry every single day, um, regardless of discomfort. And that ultimately motivated me to figure out how to make it comfortable and concealable. Um, so that was kind of a big motivation to make it happen. But now there are times when I will leave my gun at home, but it's not for the same reason. So before I would leave it at home because I was uncomfortable or I wasn't concealing. And those aren't really issues I'm dealing with anymore. Now, if I leave my gun at home, it's for really specific reasons. So I know that I have to run a couple of errands that day. I'm going to the post office or a, a building that I can't carry in. I'll try to do all of those errands in one go. So I leave my gun in my safe at home and I'll go to all the places I'm not allowed to have my gun and then I'll come back and if I have to do something else that day, I'll actually put my gun on and go there. Um, I do that pretty consistently for jujitsu. I don't carry to jujitsu. I don't have anywhere to secure my gun safely and securely, so I prefer to leave it in my safe at home. It's a decision of safety and protection of also what you have yeah. before you're going out. I think it's, it's also like a risk assessment. I'm assessing um, what kind of situation I'm going into and whether or not it makes sense for me to have my gun or for my gun to be in the safe at home. Sure. It's just a matter of which one makes the most sense. So you got motivated to overcome like the practical obstacles that were preventing you from carry. And so now rather than being prevented from doing something you want to do by like practical considerations, you're actually deciding what you want to do based on risk assessment. Yeah. Have you had any similar experiences? Like when you guys first started carrying, did you have a similar experience or did it look different? Yeah, for me, I didn't carry a lot when I first started, um, you know, for, for one, because I didn't really feel the need a lot of the time. For my own risk assessment, my life is pretty normal and boring and not a lot happens. <laughs> so at the time, I really didn't feel like I needed to carry enough to overcome all of the obstacles that were in front of me. Mm -hmm. And what I found out, I kind of came to the, the world of carry from a different path. Like there was no incident or anything that motivated me to carry. I just found that as I started increasing my level of shooting skill and increasing my level of gun knowledge and concealment knowledge, carry just became easy enough for me that it outweighed the, the challenges. Hmm. It's interesting that we, uh, we came at it from different backgrounds and all kind of ended up in the same place. That's really interesting. What about for you? For me, carrying every day, it was something that I was told, well, you have to change all these things in order to carry, including my wardrobe. And it was pants, belt loops, bigger baggy shirts. And well, you gotta change, you gotta change. And I was like, but I don't wanna wear tactical pants and a plaid shirt and- You don't? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't, do you? Interesting. No. No, it's not uh, my preference personally. Right. <laughs> but it was that whole transition too of learning what what's gonna work for me, right? Because my instruction, the, the what I had, the people that I was going to were all very tactical in nature, mm -hmm. right? And people like Philster came out with the Enigma. It was a game changer, right? I like to wear yoga pants. I like to wear racer back tanks and shorts. So it's just figuring out what that accommodation looked like for me, and you know, dressing around the gun instead of having the gun dress me, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think a lot of times we're, we're given advice about concealment, uh, but the actual underlying mechanics of concealment are not common knowledge. So we get a lot of advice like, well, you have to dress around the gun or you have to 
buy pants that are a size too large for you or you have to wear a baggy shirt. But there's a grain of truth to that. And you do have to make some accommodations to carry a big of chunk course. of plastic or metal on your body. And then, you know, that's fair to say. However, if you're using the concealment mechanics to their fullest advantage, the, the amount of concession you have to make is really small. And it really doesn't, it, not anymore, it doesn't require you to, to wear tactical pants and, mm -hmm. you know, a fishing vest. And, you know, that stuff is, is kind of a thing of the past. But the, the rest of the gun world hasn't caught up to that yet. Right. So some of the stuff we're talking about is, it's not common knowledge. It's um, it's counterintuitive. It's layers it's, of intimidation. It's complicated. Yeah. Um, but it's all stuff that, like Tessa was saying, take a little bite of it today and a little bite tomorrow, and before you know it, you've got a big body of knowledge to work from. I think another thing that is really tough is that you know we want to be able to carry in an outfit that we feel confident in, and I think that's really important personally. I, that was that was a barrier for me when it came to thinking about, even thinking about carrying a gun. I really identify with my style and I, it was not something I was willing to just lay down. And so I think the other thing that is tough is wrapping your mind around safety right. with that as well. I, I, I see a lot of advice getting tossed out there and a lot of if it works for you, then it works for you. Every human body is different and unique, and the things that work for Tessa might not work for me and they might not work for you. Right. However, it's really important to start from a body of knowledge, and when you do make a compromise or a choice, make it from an informed position. And it, you know, not all opinions are equal, and not all expertise is equal quality. And it can be really tough when you're starting out to sort out the good information from the bad, but again, it's part of taking those little bites.